Hey, Blaze fans, welcome back to another edition of the Blaze podcast. Um, on today's episode, me, Ed Kimberley, Stu Coles, as always, from Blaze TV, and uh, returning defenseman, last year's captain, uh, Drew Schistel. Drew, thank you so much for uh, taking out some time in your day to, uh, uh, to join us. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. We were we were busting your uh, we were busting you a little bit because you have the crispest camera out of anybody that we've had on here. Uh, <laughs> Actually, a friend's computer. I can't even take credit for it. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Well, he has some good gear. Even Matt Boleski didn't have a better one. He plays on the show, so <laughs> um, <laughs> nice, nice job on that. Um, but I mean, the whole thing is we're going to talk about your career. Talk a little bit about the Blaze as well, um, and we we've, we've got to know you a little bit from when you played in the league previously, but. I don't think anyone's really touched on like your career when you were younger, because you 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 were pretty successful in the Ontario League, and being an mm. Ontario boy, that must have been pretty cool to to go straight into the O. Yeah, no, that was that was awesome. I I got lucky enough. I didn't really expect to be able to play as a 16 year old. Um, it was kind of one of those dreams, you know, when you when you have when you're a kid and you're playing minor hockey, and all of a sudden I got the opportunity to play like immediately when I was 16. So that was. That was awesome, and it, the, my team was only forty-five minutes from my hometown too. So that was uh, that was also because I mean you could play for a team that was eight hours down the highway or something like that, you know. And the friends and family don't really get a chance to see you, but when you're 16, 45 minutes down the highway, it was kind of just it was a good situation all around for sure. Yeah, and then you had one of the one of the most unique junior careers, and it doesn't happen very often. It, the, the team moved halfway through. <laughs> like, I think right. it was after yeah. the second year, you went yeah. from Mississauga to Niagara. Yeah, um, and I was, so. I was gonna, I was gonna mention that too, actually, because where my hometown is, I was forty-five minutes down the highway uh, in Mississauga, and then they just moved basically forty-five minutes in the other direction from my hometown the other way. So, I mean, it kind of worked out, worked out perfect. It was right in the middle. Yeah, there's, there's been hockey in Niagara before, right? So it wasn't a, an entirely new thing, but moving to a franchise for the first time is always a, a little different. Yeah. Yeah, it was – there's been there's been junior teams in that area in the past. Um, junior teams, I guess they just – they move around quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, no, they're doing really well there now too. They they built a new rink. Uh, the fan base there is – is is awesome so yeah I had, a, I had a lot of fun there actually and it's a great showcase i mean it, it's arguably i mean a lot of the other leagues are catching up now but still the, the premier chl junior league and what a showcase for uh aspiring yeah. pros yeah just like especially looking back seeing all the players that you play against that are you know full-time bona fide superstars in the nhl it's 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 a uh, it's it's pretty good and i mean yeah definitely proud to be an ohl alum that's for sure just a lot of, I mean, count the list is just yeah, yeah, yeah. insane with, with the amount of talent that comes out of that league. So it's, uh, no, it was, it was a great time. I had a lot of fun playing junior hockey, that's for sure. Didn't you play with Petrangelo and he just won a cup? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't want to be sitting here name dropping the whole time. Uh, but, no, that's cool. <laughs> um, no, yeah, uh, Petro, like, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of fun in junior. He, was, uh, he came in the year after I was there. Um, so I was, it was my second year in the league when he was a rookie and he came in with, in our last year in Mississauga before we moved to, uh, Niagara, but yeah, we spent a lot of time together. We had, we had a lot of fun, uh, for sure. And we had, we had some good teams too. We never, we never won a championship, which was kind of unfortunate, but we had a lot of good players there and a lot of good times. So yeah, definitely. Uh, he was, he was, he was a good guy and we, I played like, again, I play with a lot of really good players. So it's, it's, uh, the list, the list is endless really. Yeah, there's some Blaze alumni on there. Justin DaCosta. Oh, is that right? Oh, years oh I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He played with us. He won a cup in 14-15. And uh, Chris Lawrence played briefly. I don't know if you remember yeah. him. Yeah, and, no, he, I, uh, I played with both of them. Yeah, DaCosta was um, – he was an overager when I was a 16-year-old. So he was, he was 20 when I came in as a 16-year-old. And uh, Lawrence as well, he was there. He was in – his, in his day, he was an unbelievable mm-hmm. player too. He – He's like big guy, crazy long reach, good skill. Good, like he just kind of had it. He had it all too. And, um, you know, he's, it's just, it's kind of surprising the way his career kind of went because when you talk about all the tools, he, he literally had everything you could ask for. So, and a really good guy too. He was from just down the street from me as well. He's, he's not, he's not, he doesn't live too far from here actually. Hockey's a small world, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> I just yeah, thought I'd look really back to see if you played with anyone who played for the Blaze because I, 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 I don't remember doing that research for a while, so I thought I'd refresh. 
Um, the so, hockey world really is a small world. You, you always run into somebody, yeah. you know, you, that you played with or that you grew up with. And it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool in that sense. You know what I mean? It's a pretty tight knit community. Everyone is always, uh, looking out for each other and, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's fun. And it's cool as well because you got drafted by Buffalo, which is literally just across the border right. from, from Niagara. So they must've had a real good look at you and they took you in the second round. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's another thing that was kind of funny how it all worked out with, with my junior teams being so close to home and then all of a sudden getting drafted by a team that's literally just over the border, another 20 minutes down the highway from there. So it was, uh, it was funny how it all, uh, it all worked out. I was lucky, obviously, like I said, other people, you know, they might go to a team that's across the country or across the continent. And, um, for me, for me to go there and you know, with training camps and things just, right over the border it, it worked out really well and what was that like i mean the second rounds something to brag about you know you're not in the basement you're not you're not just getting a phone call the next day you know you that's that's a big deal how was it for you man it must have been cool no yeah again i um i my junior days were just a lot of fun and uh for, for that to happen i was lucky enough to be at the draft as well um it was down in columbus the year i was there and I uh, went down with my family, you know, my agent, kind of everyone else was, was down there at the time. And to just to just be around there and, you know, you're doing the interviews with the teams and uh, before the draft and the whole the whole process was was amazing. So I went higher than I was expecting to, which is obviously which is nice. So um, that was a surprise. But, yeah, that whole experience was was amazing. I'm glad I got I got the chance to go down there and do it because a lot of people I get drafted, they don't. They're not, they're not in the building. You know, they might just get a phone call when they're sitting at home, but to, to be actually in the building is uh, it's a pretty special thing for sure. Did you know, did you know Buffalo? Did you have a feeling? Because I, I watch a lot of chicklets and they have some guys on there talk about their draft days and, you know, they talk, oh, I spoke to this team and this team and this team and I got a few from these guys. I can't remember who it was. Um, I think it might have been Terry Ryan. And then he's talking about Tampa Bay. Well, Damon. And they say, hey, we're not interested. You want to know about when your team is. So, <laughs> so you have to do like player just to yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about someone else. Uh, yeah, that, it was for me, Buffalo was kind of, um, it was a bit of a surprise, to be honest. Uh, I, I interviewed with a, a handful of teams kind of like the day before the draft. Did a few others um, at the, the combine in Toronto. And uh, no, I, I, was, I was totally not expecting Buffalo, but, um, obviously you're not going to, at the end of the day, you're not, you're not going to complain. And, uh, for it to be close to home too, was, uh, was nice. So it, it all worked out pretty well. Yeah, for sure. And then you, you had your entry level. They, they tacked on another year, had a real good long look at the year. You were an American league all-star. Um, didn't spend a lot of time down in the coast either. They really kept you around. Were, were you proud of what you achieved in the American league? Yeah, no question. Um, every, I mean, when you don't, when you don't make it full time, obviously with the team that you were drafted by playing in the NHL, it's no one would say they, you know, they're completely happy and content with mm -hmm. how things went because that's the ultimate goal, right? You want to spend your whole career there. But at the end of the day, I, I had a, I had a good, you know, good career in the American league when I was there. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses, but injuries are kind of mm -hmm. part of the, part of the, you know, whole thing as well comes with the territory. So I had a couple untimely injuries, um, you know, some extended time off because of surgery and rehab and things like that, which was, which was unfortunate. It kind of derailed a lot of my momentum that I had going when I was, when I was a little bit younger, the season that I was chosen to the all-star team there, I only played half the season because I missed the rest of the year with, uh, with knee surgery. So, I mean, those things are unfortunate, but you can't really, dwell on them it's just kind of part of the yeah. whole process right so what are you going to do no that's, that's a really mature way of looking at it because i know <laughs> i well, i say i know I, I can gather it's it's pretty frustrating when you're on that bubble you're on right on that cusp you take an injury some guy doesn't get called down um doesn't get sent down when you think maybe they're going to switch things up and yeah exactly sitting there on the edge of your seat like damn come on yeah i know that's a lot of it's timing for sure i was i was playing really good hockey <clears throat> but uh again it's it, it's one of those things and Everyone goes through it. It's just the, t the timing was really kind of the worst part of it all. 
Uh, especially when the team, you know, during your rehab, they're, you know, they're basically telling you if, if you're healthy, we could definitely use you. So that yeah. you know, you're sitting there thinking I could have, you know, it could have been me on, <laughs> watching it on TV, but it's, uh, I mean, it is what it is. And, and again, I, you can't really get too frustrated about it at this point. It's just, it's, yeah. it's more of a, it's actually more of a laugh than anything at this point. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. mentioned, you mentioned the All Star Game. They're a big deal, like in the in the NHL. Obviously, the American League is a big show as well. We don't really have anything like that over here. What, what was that like? Well, the thing with that too is, uh, so I was chosen to the team, and then and then I was <laughs> I was injured like a couple of days after that, so I didn't even actually get to play in the game. Oh, I was no hurt right, yeah, I was hurt right before the All Star uh, weekend, so. Um, I was supposed to go there, and instead, uh, while I was waiting for surgery, I just decided to book a flight and, and go down to uh, the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that. That's how I spent my All Star break, um, which was an amazing time too. But I, obviously, it was unfortunate I didn't get to play in the game because yeah. I was injured. But uh, yeah, that's how I spent my All Star break that, <laughs> that. that year. But uh, that, was, that was a good yeah. time too. Yeah. I just called my coach and I said, listen, if, if I'm going to be out the rest of the season, do you mind if I just kind of skip on the weekend and book a flight? And <laughs> I'll, see you, I'll see you in a week. I love that. <laughs> it was a nice, nice, way, nice way to kind of decompress and get the frustrations out after, you know, yeah. basically being told your, your season's over. So. Yeah. Blew the knee out, missing the All-Star game. I'm, I'm going to get some palm trees and a cocktail. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go sit on a beach. Yeah, attaboy. Um, were you one of the guys that hit the vet system and then thought, I want to play some more, and, and then Europe? It's usually yeah. the call. Right? Yeah. You just you, you kind of get to a point in 82 game seasons. And, uh, you know, I, I just I just wanted to change the scenery. And I, I had a good opportunity going over to Germany my first year in Europe. So, And I was actually playing with a couple guys that I spent some time with in the American League as well. So I played. I played with guys that I had already known. It was a it was a good, comfortable situation there. So, you know, I just got to a certain point where I said I needed I needed change. So mm-hmm. glad I did it. Definitely, like my whole experience in Europe as well has been the cultural, you know, change. I I I love moving over to Europe. So yeah, definitely no uh, no regrets doing that. That's for sure. You had quite a mix of, of scenery as well, playing in the EBA, at uh, the EBL, you're playing uh, a lot of like, mountainous towns, you played Norway, Scandinavia is a beautiful part of the world, obviously, yeah. um, in Germany, naturally, and then uh, over in the UK, so you've got a good yeah. mixed bag there. Yeah, I've kind of covered uh, covered the whole, uh, all of Europe, spanned the whole uh, map, pretty much. Yeah, because when I was in the Austrian League, being in Hungary, it's the easternmost team in that league so when you're when you're traveling from there basically to anywhere else we go to northern Italy uh there was a team in Slovenia in the capital there in Ljubljana for a a little while um where else obviously all over uh Austria but oh there's a team in southern Czech Republic too so that that's a really cool league where you get to see a lot of the surrounding areas and like you're saying you're traveling through the mountains constantly you wake up on the bus you look at the window and it's just like a postcard, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. pretty amazing. So yeah, that, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but I'm going to type up some PR for a press release a couple of seasons back before mm-hmm. uh, I think you went to Norway instead, or it was a mid season trade. And then you ended up in, uh, in Cardiff. Yeah. So you were close to coming to Coventry uh, quite a while ago and it, it never quite worked out then. Do you remember that or? Yeah, no, I, I do. It's um, I I spoke with I spoke with Stewie, yeah, one of the the summer before I came to Cardiff, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the at the time, it just didn't it didn't work out. But um, I was I was really close actually, and obviously having the opportunity with with the school package and the way Coventry University uh, treats all the players is is top notch. So uh, I'm 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 super glad that I came to do that. that that's another huge huge thing that that Coventry just the organization plus their partnership with the school they do amazingly well so uh that that was definitely a, a good call on my point 
I agree. Stu, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done talking for a little while. I'll let you get in. Yeah, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Ed's just mentioned about you. So you were, you were t- talking to the Blaze, but you ended up in, in Cardiff. And you, you had a, a pretty successful time there, obviously, sort of picking up the playoff win. Um, Cardiff. Yeah. But one of the retro games was the game where Cardiff came to Coventry on the last yeah. game of the season and lost and lost that title. How, what was that sort of feeling in, from a Cardiff perspective? Like, you know, coming so close, but then losing on the final. Yeah, that was, that was strange. Um, just obviously because the way that the league works and the, and the, uh, the emphasis on the, on the league being, being the uh, most important trophy, which is, which is awesome. I think um, I, it was, it was my first year. So we were just like, I was just starting to really understand how much it meant to everybody and how important it was. And uh, <laughs> to lose in that fashion, it was just, yeah, it was unfortunate. And everyone was pretty, pretty bummed as you can imagine. I think we were tied on points and, and we lost on uh, <clears throat> regulation wins or whatever it was. So it was, that was, that was strange and it was unfortunate, but I mean, what are you going to do? But I mean, from going from there, how do you then pick yourself up for the playoffs? I mean, it, like you said, it is, uh, it's in the UK, at least it's not seen as quite the most important trophy, but it's still a trophy that's there to be won. So, oh, for sure. It was pretty easy. I, everyone was, everyone was just really looking forward to kind of redemption. You know, everyone was, everyone was, uh, enthusiastic. No one thought like, okay, the season's done. We missed our chance. Like there was none, there was none of that. Uh, and, and that playoff weekend and I was, you know, it's just, it's super unfortunate, obviously with the way this past season ended, because I was telling the guys like the playoff weekend is a unique thing that you, you don't really get in any other league. And, and that was a hell of a time. Like we had a, we had a great time there having the teams like kind of um, staying in the same area and, you know, you're watching the game before you and you, you, everyone's just kind of around the arena. So that's, that's a really cool, unique thing that no other league has. So we, we, had, a, we had a great time. And I, I wish things turned out obviously better with COVID and everything. We had the opportunity to do that this year. Hopefully we can get there next year. But that was an awesome time. Yeah. Roll on a short while. And then Danny Stewart picks up the phone gets in touch and you you come you come on over to Coventry what was the what was the, the attractive proposition about moving moving to the blaze yeah I, I kind of touched on it a little bit before just with the uh, with the with the uni aspect and that, that to be honest that was kind of the big um, the big element to me coming over in the first place. But I mean, in terms of the organization, I, I've I heard nothing but good things. I had spoken to other p- people that had played in Coventry prior, and um, Stewie was, he's he in my opinion he's probably the best coach in the league. He he knows his stuff. He's passionate. He but he let he lets the guys kind of do their thing. You know, he you can tell he's he's genuine, um, and just just that kind of. Um, what's it called just his, his demeanor and everything too. When I was talking to him on the yeah. phone and he, he's completely upfront and honest with you. And it's, it's just, it's nice having a guy that you can, that you can talk to. And I got that over the phone and it, and it just felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do. Obviously I'm, I'm glad I made that decision, but he's, he's good. At, he's good at what he does. I think anyone will tell you like they, they respect Stewie because of how he handles his business. And uh, yeah, no. So it was, it was kind of an easy decision. And you, you've just had some some kind words for Danny, but obviously he had some some high thoughts of yourself because he named you as captain. Um, so, what was it like to be sort of being given that letter first time in new team? How did that feel? Yeah, I know that was a huge that was a huge honor. Um, just, I mean, for for someone to put their trust in you, you know, having showing that that they they respect you and support you. And, and, and like I said, have that trust in you to, to lead a team. And obviously we, we had a really young team last year and just to, to be put in a position where you, you know, you're, you're relied on to, to kind of bring the group together. And um, yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. And it was, it was a huge honor. Like I said, it doesn't matter what team you're playing for, what league you're in, you know, if you get named captain, it's, it's a huge honor. And um, we had a good supporting group too. We had a lot, we had a lot of good people around the room, 
made my life easy, to be honest, you know, and uh, just a, a good dynamic in the dressing room. And it was, uh, it was a really fun year. I think everyone in that room will tell you they had, a, they had an amazing year and they had a lot of fun. And it was, yeah, it was great to be a part of. And having a lot of fun and, and playing hockey is obviously a, a good thing. But as you just mentioned, you were, you were still studying at the university as well. So full-time hockey player, enjoying life and trying to be a student at the same time. I mean, how does that possibly work? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not easy. <laughs> it's, uh, it, was, it was a lot, but at the same time, like, you have quite a bit of downtime. Obviously, with our schedule, we play on the weekends. And um, Monday to Friday, after training, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of players will tell you after training, they have a lot of downtime. And um, just, just that, man, you know, managing your time so you, you get done what you need to during the week. It can, be, it can be a lot, especially with the road trips on the, on the weekends and trying to get work done on the bus and, and things like that. It's, it's not really easy, but um, it, w- it was fine. Like once, once you adjust to it and, and you know your schedule, you know your deadlines for things and all that type of thing, it's, you manage. <laughs> it's not too, too bad. And thinking about how the seasons just kind of panned out, I mean, obviously it didn't quite end. Uh, potentially the way that everyone was hoping for and you've kind of touched upon it what do you think the Blazers chances were rolling into the playoffs I mean I think you put a tweet out that kind of yeah. it alluded to where you thought they were going yeah I I mean I don't have any there's there's no doubt in my mind that we could have contended for the for the playoff championship there's no I mean we were the hottest team hands down in the league and I'm sure the bigger clubs they weren't they didn't want to play us. Like we, we, we literally rolled over everybody over the last, I mean, I think we lost one game in regulation from new year's, the Belfast mm-hmm. trip. Uh, we, we lost the first game. And I think the game after that, like from that point on, we, mm-hmm. we didn't lose a game all season. Um, so I don't think anyone wanted to play us at that time. Obviously, uh, Motter was, uh, he was on fire <laughs> and so was everyone else. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was contributing. And uh, again, it was, it was a lot of fun. I don't think anyone really wanted to play us. And usually when you get a group like that together, there's kind of a point during the season where something clicks and you go, ah, we've got a good group here. What was it? What was that moment? Was there a moment for you with the, with the blaze last year? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if there was one, exact point in time going back to that Belfast trip I think like yeah a road trip always finds a way to to kind of bring guys together (laughs) as well I'd say that that was a lot of fun and and um I think guys started to like truly believe in themselves I guess as as cliche as that sounds I guess but there was just yeah everyone everyone just kind of gelled at the same time, we had a little bit of a rough go earlier in the season. We made a couple slight tweaks, I guess, to just our game and how we wanted to play. And it just kind of all came together. Um, and everyone, even like the young guys, were, were confident and they were a big part of things. And everyone, everyone just kind of seemed to find their groove. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say exactly maybe one particular point in time, but you could just see the progression over time and then it all started to click and yeah. What do you think was your, the highlight for yourself last year? Um, but either for the team or for you personally, what do you, what do you look back on over the past sort of 12 months and think, yeah, that was a, that was a good point. Um, oh, well to kick things off, just like being named captain obviously was, was massive. And that was, that was, uh, that was really cool as we, as we spoke about before, but I think, I think we set a record maybe uh, with with consecutive games with a point or something like that. I forget exactly what the what the uh, record was, but it that was when, when I mean when we were rolling, that was amazing. Like there's no there's no better feeling than coming to the rink every single week when you know you you pretty much you know in the back of your mind we're either going to win or we're going to give ourselves a chance to win. And I think when we were on that streak, yeah, that was, I mean, that was some of the most fun I've had uh, playing in a, in a long time. So that was, yeah, that was, that was really cool. And obviously 
those experiences over the past 12 months, they've kind of influenced your decision to come back? I mean, was that the main reason? Was there anything else that's kind of kept you in Coventry? Um, I, I don't know. Well, so I, I signed, like I spoke to Danny about coming back obviously before a lot of the, any of the COVID stuff uh, started happening and obviously the, the way that the season got canceled and everything, I had already spoken to Stewie prior to that. So I had, I had an idea what was going to happen uh, for the next year. So that was nice to kind of have that settled and, and taken care of. And then all of a sudden the whole mess with, with, with the COVID stuff came afterwards. But um, just, I, I would say, he, you know, he was a big part of it. Um, especially him putting his, his faith in me uh, meant a lot. So that was, that was a big kind of motivator for myself to, you know, make it work and come back the next year and then just kind of try and pick up where I left off or not, not just myself personally, but kind of where the team left off. And it was exciting to, to stay, you know, a part of it and see what could transpire, transpire coming next year. So that's what I'm looking forward to most, I would say. So we're all looking forward to as well. That's for sure. Mm. Ed. No, no. Yeah, hopefully it's not too long before we get to get to call some games. You get to play some games and roll back in the sky dome. And one thing that I kind of wanted to talk about because I remember when you played for Cardiff. Um, maybe it was just because we didn't get to see you play all that often, but I always th- felt like they played you different to Danny. Like obviously you have the attributes you have as a player. You know, you've got a good mm. size to you, skate really well. You like to join the rush, carry the puck. It almost felt like. Lordo had the reins on you a little bit. Is that fair or is that just me, my interpretation? Uh, that's a fair, I'd say that's a fair interpretation. Uh, just the, 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 te- the overall team dynamic from what we had in Cardiff to, you know, my role with Coventry was, yeah, it was definitely dif- different. Um, but I think one of the main things with that was Fournier that, that year, like two years ago, he was, I mean, he was the best player. It seemed like he was the best player on planet Earth that year. Like he was, <laughs> he was lights out. So I mean, uh, just having that guy, and you know him feeling so good about himself and playing so well. Um, we had a good old. It was just that you know the, the way kind of they work there. They have a really kind of veteran, experienced team all the time. And I just kind of came in because I came in a little bit later. I came in yeah. mid November, and they already kind of had their their playing style, you know, how, you know, their personnel. So I, I kind of came in just wanting to, to not mix, not kind of like mess with the, with the team yeah. chemistry and just find, you know, find my groove and just slide right in. So uh, no, it was, it was a great year too, but definitely kind of the dynamic with, with the team and the personnel and all that was, uh, was a lot different than when I came at the start of the year in Coventry. And then my, my responsibilities were obviously, a lot more with Coventry when I came in. So, Because you have that all three zones mentality to your game. You can clearly see that. And this hockey club this year was great in all three zones. I was going to talk about scoring, and then I was thinking about transitional play. Because when our transitional play clicked in kind of November, I think it was maybe early December, that really gave us such a boost. Zone entries were massive. Um, The line chemistry seems – I think Yanni got back from injury and – yeah. A lot of things ran through him on that top unit, and it was, yeah. it must it just looked effortless at times. It 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 was again. I I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. But like our team speed and just the way we transition, all of our all of our defensemen as well could skate well, move the puck, and that was the, that was one of the biggest um, biggest things in my opinion was just that efficiency, just, just being able to transition, like you're saying, moving the puck, getting it, getting it into some of our skilled guys' hands. Like, you know, obviously Andrew Johnston, Chucky, there was like the talent up front and, and the, the playmaking, the ability, it was just kind of, it, it was effortless, really. We, uh, we just wanted to get into their hands and let them do their thing. So the quicker we could do that and the quicker we could get out of our own zone, I mean, no one wants to play defense all game. Like we, we give, <laughs> give the, give the skill guys a puck and get it moving as quickly as you can. Right. And um, we did, we did that really well. And obviously modern. Um, and I live with, I live with Jamie Phillips too. I actually just saw him last week, actually. Oh. Uh, he, he just lives 20 minutes down the, down the highway for me too. Uh, so we grabbed some dinner, which, which was nice. It was nice seeing him. But I mean, just having the, you know, the, the confidence in your, in your goaltending as well. 
Um, Modder plays the puck extremely well. He, he's like a third defenseman. He can he can he can put it on anyone's tape. I'm I'm sure you guys remember probably multiple times with him oh, yeah. grabbing the puck and just like firing mm-hmm. it down. So that makes our job easier when he can fire the puck three zones or two zones down the ice. And, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about it. That, that makes things really nice as well. So it's just a good, good mix of everything. I mean, you were talking about, uh, I think it was the consecutive points record for the club. Um, but never has the league had a British leading goal scorer at the end of the year. Um, and man, Luke Ferrara could miss. Yeah, you talk about goal scoring ability and shooting the puck. His his release, like that was, that's just one other player, obviously in a whole lineup of guys that that had awesome years. And you got to give him so much credit. He <clears throat> again, when he got the puck on his stick, it was in the net. It was like it was automatic. His release is one of the quickest in the league. He finds it's just more of like a an awareness thing. I think he just knows where to be to put himself in a situation to score. And he just, he did obviously did it better than anyone last year. Cause he, he finished the, in the league leading goals and it was super impressive. It, Brit or not. Like I know, I know people say, you know, a Brit has never led the league in scoring, but I mean, he has top notch ability regardless of where he's from. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's just, there's no denying that. So yeah, he had a, he had an unbelievable year and he deserves all of it for sure. Mm-hmm. And you've had to cover him too. It's really interesting what you said about um, he always finds those pockets of space. And I always talk to people about the tactics of hockey. I say hockey is all about space. A lot of professional sports are, but hockey is, is commanding and taking away key areas of space. Mm-hmm. And and having having that ability to uh, to cause defenseman nightmares is, uh, is, oh, is, for is sure. essential. Yeah, when, when, when a guy like that is kind of in your peripheral, when you're defending something like that and you know if you give him – an inch and, and someone gets, gets in the puck and, you know, it could be in your net, you know, that's, that's on defenseman's mind, minds all the time, <clears throat> all the time, excuse me. So it's, it, it's, it's such a talent. It's yeah, it's, and it's hard to come by. You don't, you don't always get that. Some people might have the, the natural, you know, maybe shooting ability, but the actual, the ability to find those areas and, and be opportunistic. He's a super op- opportunistic guy and he just takes advantage of every chance he gets. And it seems like yeah. every single time he got the chance, it went to the net. So I'm glad he's back. That's for sure. <laughs> we are too. Yeah. We are too, for sure. Two I don't want to is, uh... I don't wanna defend him. No. <laughs> and that's, that's probably the best seal of approval you can get from any elite league defenseman. I don't want to have to cover him. Exactly. Um, yeah. Like, um, Drew, I can see why you're the captain. I mean, we don't know each other that well, but you're one of the most level-headed guys I've spoke to on this thing. Um, but you must be really excited to, uh, and a bit restless to get back on the ice because I know it's been a, a longer layoff than most people are used to. Oh, for sure. It's Yeah, it's a crazy long layoff. And it's uh, – hopefully it gets sorted sooner rather than later. Um, and I'd like to get back on the ice and, uh, and, and kind of get back into the routine, into the swing, like, Hockey players are super um, – a lot of athletes, I guess, they, they like their routine, you know, and they like, they like the same, you know, as, as boring or monotonous or whatever it is, as you want to call it. Like, they, they, I think they actually do appreciate that training, you know. You know, you get there at a certain time, you're out of there by a certain time, and it's kind of like, you know, the schedule's set. And uh, when, when there's a lot of uncertainty right now, hockey players get a little <laughs> – I don't know. They yeah, they go a little bit crazy. So I think uh, I think everyone wants to kind of get back into what they, you know, they always wanted to do. For sure, Stu. Have you got anything else you want to uh, close on? Or no, just uh, really glad to have you back. I'm, and just hoping that we can get it all done and dusted and some ice hockey played sooner rather than later. Yeah, exactly. I'm. Uh, uh, I think we're on the same page with that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Drew Schistel, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, honestly, really, really appreciate it. We're looking forward to seeing you uh, back in the Midlands. And guys and girls at home, thank you so much for uh, joining us again. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you all soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.